Dr. Ricardo Gorini from the International Renewable Energy Agency, a much younger organization which was founded in 2009. Um, on the initiative, I should mention here, it was first a group of parliamentarians. It was Hamann Scher at the 2004 uh, Renewables Conferences for the first time discussed. Um, then it was created, is now uh, based in Abu Dhabi with an office also in Bonn. And Ricardo, you have uh, recently launched a World Energy Transition Outlook, uh, which describes a 1.5 degrees uh, pathway, which means um, how the world energy supply can be in line with the kind of what we really want to have 1.5 degrees Paris uh, goals. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you how IRENA looks at the uh, future energy supply system. Ricardo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. It's a pleasure to be here and to bring this IDENA's view. Um, good to have uh, Paolo and, and Gianni as well. It's really a nice discussion. So uh, I, 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 I think this, uh, you know, uh, working together is, is really key. So I think that was a, a very good title decision from, from your side. So I congratulate because it, it's quite challenging. We, we, we hear from, from both of your presentations how, how important it is to, to really raise the ambitions in all levels, energy-wise, all together. So I think that's really uh, very, very important. And I would like to bring as well this message here. So let me try to share my presentation. So uh, I just wanted to, to start with this. Uh, you know, the level of the challenge, uh, as, as you can see here, to get to the 1.5C by 2050, we are talking about the remaining carbon around five gigatons. So it's, it's quite, it's quite a, a huge effort to bring that down as soon as possible. So what we present here in this graph is exactly the deep decrease that's needed in all emissions uh, from, you know, the next decade, but of course, uh, as well in the following two decades. So we need, we need really to bring all end use sectors. That was an important highlight already mentioned. So transport, buildings, industry, and of course the power sector, as you can see, you, you have the numbers here. So it's clear the, the, the level of effort. So we would like to, to bring as, as IRENA, what we understand is, uh, you know, the roadmap that we, 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 we present here to to uh, you know to decrease this, these emissions and I would like to start also with the, with the story when when I was back to, in 2000 working to, to the Brazilian government so we, we had these long-term energy planning discussions there and just to give you an idea we were discussing if wind was a possibility or not in our uh, future perspectives in the following uh, five to ten years. Uh, at that time, you know, there are a lot of questions re regarding, you know, oh my God, wind is not really competitive. Is this going to happen? And just to, to be short here, you know, the, 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 the history. So we have a successful wind penetration in the energy matrix. Uh, now is a key, uh, uh, you know, uh, resource that is penetrating in, in Brazil and everywhere, everywhere in the world, just to, to mention one. But this is just to, uh, to remind us that's, that the, the challenge that we, we, we face and how we look at it uh, in the future uh, sometimes is really, uh, let's say, contaminated with the, with the eyes of today. So I think we need to, to remain positive in that sense because uh, it is possible, you know. So let's, let's try to push further. I mean, uh, the competitiveness is there. We will see a, a, a few numbers. And, you know, in terms of energy planning, my message to governments is let's push for it. Let's push for it. As, as I said, uh, it, it's, it's, it's something that we, we may surprise ourselves on, on how important the penetration will uh, move forward. So, and what, what, are, what are we talking about? I mean, as I said, there, there are several possibilities to address the emission reduction. It's not just power sector, indeed. We need to go to end use sectors. We need to bring energy efficiency. So it's very important to have energy efficiency everywhere, including the supply side. We need to move forward to uh, bring the direct renewable use to end use sectors. So basically what we're talking about really, the transport sector has to go through a massive transformation, especially. 
uh, we will come forward uh, later on that. But electrification is what we understand one main driver here, because uh, how you are going to transform all this, let's say, uh, uh, fossil fuel consumption into renewable. Electrification has a major component. As we can see here, of course, uh, together with the hydrogen and derivatives, we can combine all of these green electrification, green hydrogen, for instance, and we can bring that forward to uh, the many uh, different markets, namely hard to decarbonize sectors, as was mentioned, shipping, aviation, industries, a couple of uh, sect subsectors there. So it's very important that we understand the whole picture here. There is a role for, uh, for CCS and BACs, especially BACs. We understand this combination is an interesting one to bring forward the emissions down. So 90% of the decarbonization will come from those uh, uh, components that you can see here. So uh, first of all, we agree here that we need to keep flat the total primary energy consumption. So we cannot really expect that this is uh, a continuous grow and it's not just acceptable anymore. So here we have a role of energy efficiency, of eff effective and efficient use in all the sectors. And of course, uh, the, the, the result is, is the final energy consumption that, that is more aligned and of course, the, the, the combination will bring, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, consumption down or, or at least not increasing. What I would like also to address here is the importance of this pace. So look at the pace that's needed in terms of renewable energy penetration for that to happen. And this final energy consumption now. So if you look at this 2018 versus 2050, I think this is very illustrative. This is a massive, massive transformation and we're not talking about here uh, the energy sector because for each one of those little box here to happen, we need to really understand the dynamics behind that. So if you look at what's going on in terms of fossil fuel, of course, uh, in 2018, today, we still have a lot of fossil fuel consumption. We, we, we hear that from, from Rana. We expect by 2050, around 10% of fossil. So we need to, to bring that to a completely different level, a completely different level. So, of course, uh, electrification again, you can see 21%, 2018, we need to move to, 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 six, to, to 51 or, or 60 if you consider this green hydrogen altogether, you know. So basically, it's all, uh, uh, it's a lot about uh, power sector transformation. So we need to bring, uh, of course, investment scale up here, all this, uh, I would say, operation of the system, uh, flexibility, variable renewable energy, so we need really to bring that uh, into, into the agenda today for that to happen in the near future. Uh, hydrogen, hydrogen is, is really key now. I mean, we, we understand that hydrogen, uh, it's, it's not a new discussion, but now I think it's getting really serious. We need to address hydrogen uh, in a serious way because this is how we will move forward to the 1.5. Otherwise, we will, we will have problems to, to address the hard to decarbonize sectors and many other possibilities that hydrogen can, can solve us. And of course, bioenergy. Bioenergy is, is, is key. We're talking about here about modern, sustainable bioenergy. So we need to address uh, uh, a lot of issues that are still not allowing bioenergy to really make this full penetration in different markets. So uh, I think here uh, it's important to, 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 to address that we, we need to reach 130, 150 exajoules by 2050. It's quite a lot of bioenergy that, that we need to move forward. So uh, having said that, uh, what are exactly the numbers related to power sector? Please have a look on, on this, uh, you know, electricity capacity graph. I think that's very illustrative. We're talking a huge amount of penetration of renewable energy related technologies. So uh, it, it's, it's 90 plus percent of, of share. So basically wind, power, hydro, geothermal, biomass, we need all of them to really uh, make this future renewable possible. So uh, we can explore that also further in the, in the, in the key and a sessions, but it's very important to have all of, all of them on board. And I agree with Paolo, the role of hydro is, is key as, as we need to, to have you know, a lot of, uh, I would say, flexibility related services that the combination of the technologies can play a role. So again, I would like to highlight that specifically in the, in the end use sectors, each subsector, each sector has its own characteristics. So please look at the contributions in terms of emission reduction from each one of those. 
transport again has a very important role of course industry uh, followed by industry but i would like to highlight uh, the transformation in transport that can really bring bring a lot of spill over you know in different aspects in terms of infrastructure in terms of how we, we change the way our societies uh, work so uh, here if you look at the, uh, at the numbers, we're talking about really renewable electrification as key components. This is very, very important. Infrastructure is not yet there. We need to discuss uh, this with the governments. I mean, it's progressing well. We need to, to reach 1.8 uh, billion vehicles by 2050. I think uh, Paulo has similar numbers. So this is a massive transformation. We need really to go further. And, to, and, and if we need to pick something, let's, let, let's do that. Let's transform the transport sector altogether. Again, electrification. Uh, of course, the, the, there is a price to pay. I mean, usually we, we will need around 100 trillion, okay? 100 trillion is the planet scenario, it's, it's energy, so we need that. Additionally, we would like to have uh, 33 trillions further uh, in terms of the, the, the needs of this 1.5C uh, scenario. And, and, and look, it's one trillion additional number, additional investment. So it's not that much if you look at the, all the benefits and, and indeed we could further discuss all the benefits related to this uh, in, in the Q&A sessions, but it's, it's very important to address a massive transformation in terms of the quality of those investments, the shift towards renewable energy, electrification, energy efficiency. So we really need that to happen uh, in the coming decade, it's not just for 2050. So just to bring them uh, some granularity here, uh, of course, uh, uh, I would like to emphasize here the role of power sector, and please have a look on hydro, in fact, not scale up, biomass, solar, wind, geothermal, they all need to scale a lot, and we still need uh, to, I would say, uh, uh, to bring those investments uh, to, to the table. So, uh, to conclude, again, energy efficiency together with renewable energy uh, and, of course, electrification. But I would like to bring this uh, here because we start to connect with the actions that are needed. Uh, it's, it's all about a, a, a multi-stakeholder uh, uh, work. It, it's not just the role of governments, not just the role of consumption side, it's not just the role of supply chain. We all need to be together to understand what are the benefits that are related to renewables and how we would move forward. In these regards, you know, the investments that are needed, four trillions in average per year, would require a lot of funding opportunities. And we need really to, as, as, as you know, stakeholders that are engaged in this sector, to push this financial sector to a new level of investment and funding in terms of renewable energy. So the green uh, taxonomy discussion, all, all, all related to, uh, I would say, regulation of these finance aspects, that will help a lot uh, the post-COVID recovery in the following years. So thank you very much and back to you, Steph. Thank you so much, Ricardo. I think that was very interesting. And maybe we can later ask both of you, Paolo and now Ricardo, where will you see the differences? Um, because I, I mean, from the first impression listening to you is that there is a lot uh, is similar. I mean, you both uh, obviously underline the importance of efficiency. Uh, that's just one of it. And, and certainly renewables will be uh, the main uh, energy sources in the future.